Hello, everybody. Another day, another Warp Tour Degenerate. Oh, boy. Welcome to episode two of my multi-part series, The Warped Minds of Warp Tour, where I talk about the lesser talked about stories of some of Warp Tour's biggest creeps. Last time we talked about V1i, and if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out. It's a good one. But rather than talking about a YouTuber, we're going to talk about a musician. And if you attended the Vans Warp Tour, you definitely know who this guy is. He was the drummer for one of the biggest post-hardcore bands on the planet of all time, actually. And while you may know the story, do you know the details? Details? Do you have the proper context to understand the severity of what really happened? Let's find out. Back in high school, you'd see just about anybody walking the same halls that you walked. The white kid who plays 2K all day, head to toe in Nike swag. The libertarian kid who wears a trench coat and reads... Uh, <laughs> literature. Those theater kids that were constantly singing and waving their hands around and shut the fuck up. Just shut up, okay? Hamlet's not even good. But I'm sure you all remember that scene girl with colorful hair wearing 30,000 bracelets and constantly has her headphones in. And there's a good chance that the music coming out of those headphones was Pierce the Veil, a post-hardcore band formed in 2006 by brothers Vic and Mike Fuentes. Pierce the Veil, despite being loved predominantly by brain-dead teenagers, actually made really intelligently composed music. They had a lot of skill, but they were also super creative with how they wrote. A great example is their infusion of Latin themes in pretty much all of their songs. And Pierce the Veil edged out a lot of their competition in the post-hardcore genre. And despite me being a much bigger fan of bands like Under Oath, Alex is on Fire, and Bless the Fall, Pierce the Veil was a lot more progressive than those bands were, and honestly their mixes are really, really good, like way above quality that you'd expect from a post-hardcore band in the mid-2000s. After forming in 2006, they would release their debut album, A uh, Flare for the Dramatic, followed by their sophomore album, Selfish Machines, which came out three years later in 2010. And in 2012, they would release their magnum opus, Collide with the Sky, featuring the iconic emo and them King for a Day featuring Kellen Quinn, which has amassed hundreds and thousands and millions of streams and views. They were even big enough to go on a world tour, which is unsurprisingly isn't that common for a lot of post-hardcore bands. And of course, with their success, they had many, many opportunities to attend the Vans Warp Tour. Pierce the Veil played Warp Tour 2007, 2008, 2010, 2012, and 2015. I mean, Pierce the Veil was on top of that scene. If you talked about Warp Tour, Pierce the Veil was probably going to come up at some point, but it was only a matter of time before their high came crashing down. On November 14th, 2017, a user by the name of Punk Doll, now Horror Doll, posted a statement on behalf of her friend that Vic's younger brother and drummer of the band, Mike Fuentes, took advantage of her when she was 16 and Mike was 23. When I was 15 years old, I started speaking to Mike Fuentes of Pierce the Veil. We had met on MySpace, and at first it seemed like it was just very friendly. The conversations were normal at first, and I was only weeks away from turning 16. I had not told him of my age at the time, as nothing wrong had happened and we hadn't even met yet. I saw no harm in this, as I was just thinking of him as a cute guy that I was talking to. I didn't know who Pierce the Veil were at the time, as a flair for the dramatic had come out not too long before that. The unnamed accuser continues, alleging that after she had turned 16, she met up with Mike in real life at a show that Vic was playing at. They would make out, but it didn't go any farther than that. Not yet, at least. We would text him between days, and he would talk about how badly he wanted me, even though we hadn't had sex at this point. I was young, and he had spent so long making me feel like I was special. A few months after I turned 16, I was already 16 by the time we met IRL, an ex-friend of mine messaged Mike, informing him of my age. He then sent me a message asking if it was true. I told him yes. Yes, it was, and that I was sorry I didn't tell him. He responded with a message I'll never forget. Haha, I don't care, babe. I just thought it was funny she'd try to message me about it. Assuming that these allegations are true, it would seem like Mike does not have an issue with the fact that a 16-year-old and a 23-year-old cannot legally have a relationship of this type. It's illegal in the state of California where everything took place, but it gets even worse because allegedly the two would have sex at Vans Warped Tour 2008 in Pomona when the nameless accuser was only 16 years old. She also states that while the band may have not known about the sexual dynamic to their relationship, she hung out with all of those guys a ton, and they never said anything. Which begs the question, did they not find it strange that Mike was hanging out with the 16-year-old? Did they not know her age? I mean, she must have looked young. Anyways, she continues saying, I could go on about all the times we did it and got naked on AIM Messenger's iChat. I still have screenshots in every chat of ours saved on my old MacBook. But to save time, as this lasted until I turned 18, I won't go into detail. He knew he could control me. With the sweet things he would say, and he knew I'd always come back because at 16, this is what I thought was love. Her final statement reads, What's disgusting is, as I'm writing this, I'm still worried about him. Worried about how he'll think of me. 
Now, these allegations seem to be coherent and structured, but that isn't really enough. The friend of the accuser would then share images that while are blurred out, I'm probably just not gonna show them on YouTube, but you can find them. They're images of Mike nude on a video chat. You can also see a username that says Wheezy Mike on it. And I know that this is Mike because the tattoos of the man in the images match up with the tattoos that Mike has. It's also very chilling how many apologists are in the replies to these tweets. I mean, the standard, this isn't sufficient enough evidence for me is fine and understandable, but some of these comments seem to believe that the allegations are true, but still dismiss them. She didn't say no. It 10 years later. Why bring it up now? It's not like he her. Sex cult and is nothing. She never said stop or no. She kept going with it. She never said no or stop. Wow, Cayenne, you are a fucking scholar. Only the highest of intellectuals see the world the way you do. Something that needs to be addressed, apparently, is that during these kinds of encounters, there doesn't need to just be verbal consent, but there needs to be legal consent as well. And while I do agree that it's better that she at least verbally consented, it doesn't change the fact that their relationship is statutory and illegal. And the reason that it's statutory and illegal is because people her age typically can't make good decisions when it comes to sex. But regardless of anything, I'm not comfortable giving a definitive statement at this point. The screenshots are damning and they seem to be dated at the proper time. Problem is, is that we don't actually know who took these screenshots. It very well could have been a legal adult and we don't really know for sure because the accuser is anonymous. However, only a day later, a 23-year-old woman named Shannon Bray would also take to Twitter, making allegations towards the drummer. So glad these grimy band dudes are finally getting what they deserve. Mike Fuentes used to be a total creep to me when I was 14 and 15. Would hold my hand, ask me to date him, would ask me to send pics, etc. In response to backlash she received, she continued, I was 14. Sorry if I didn't know I needed to document it. I was already having difficulty understanding what the fuck was happening with this older man. LOL, I'm sorry that you feel as if I'm lying and that this news about your idol upsets you this much. She would then post images of her and Mike together, and by the way, this is the only proof Shannon has been able to provide. She explains her lack of evidence, stating, Like I said, nine years ago we did not have constant screenshots and receipts of everything, so no, I don't understand why a woman's word is less valuable than a man's. I was a child, and I was afraid people wouldn't believe me, and treat me the way you are treating me right now. Now at 23, I have the courage to stay strong while imbeciles like you question me. Shannon would do an interview with Loudwire.com saying that she met Mike at 2008 Warp Tour. I said, oh my god, I'm a big fan. He's like, cool, are you doing anything today? Do you want to hang out? I remember ditching my friends, holding his hand and walking around Warp Tour. I was 14. When we parted ways and he said, let me get your phone number. So we texted for a while and he'd always say things like, I was too nervous to kiss you, but next time I will. He never kissed me or anything. The furthest he went was holding my hand. We hung out until I was 15, still never doing anything other than holding hands. I remember him texting me, I have a question for you. Will you date me? You should send me pics, winky face. I specifically remember not knowing what he meant, so I sent him a picture of me smiling. And then he said, no, not that kind of pic. And then I didn't respond. Our relationship fizzled out, and we didn't talk after that. But it only gets deeper because we find out that this isn't even the first time Mike was accused of this because allegations were actually made about Mike on April 13th, 2015 on the subreddit r slash ask reddit. Girls who have slept with rock stars. How was it? What was your perception of the person afterwards? What did your friends and family think if you told them, etc. Reddit user Envy8 stated, My girlfriend slept with members of Asking Alexandria and Pierce the Veil. She was about 16 to 17 at the time and they were in their early 20s. She said the dude from Asking Alexandria was a nice guy, decent in bed, but not much to tell. But the bloke in Pierce the Veil is a whole different story. She lost her virginity to him, so she bled, so he decided to put it in her butt. Then after it was over, he threw a pillow on the floor and told her that's where she'd be sleeping. She left in a taxi immediately after. Reddit user Blade Runner responded, asking, I know you might not be able to answer this, but do you know which guy it was? The drummer, I totally forget what his name is. Her friend slept with the dude with the spiked up hair. They were both 16. And I mean, the story is clearly fucking disgusting. Aside from the sexual aspect, I mean, telling her to sleep on the floor is just like, that's fucking horrifying. And what makes this even crazier is that you can't say this is somebody trying to get attention because they're speaking anecdotally about somebody that they knew and they're not really trying to like blow up the story. They're not even real allegations. It's just kind of like they're recalling something. But we need to be honest, uh, everything so far that we've talked about is still up for speculation no matter how bad it looks. So it's hard to make any definitive statements. But in these type of situations when allegations come out, I always feel like the best way to tell if someone's innocent is how they respond.
Recently, an allegation was made about Mike from an anonymous source pertaining to events dating back nearly 10 years ago. We are taking this allegation seriously and would like to share the steps we are taking in response. Below are a few words from Mike. I'm of course aware of the allegations made about me from almost 10 years ago, and I cannot begin to describe how difficult and disturbing this entire situation has been for everyone involved. I do not take this allegation lightly and would never downplay it. I have empathy for any human being who has experienced abuse or mistreatment in their lives, and I am inspired to see so many come forward and speak out about it. No one should have to suffer in silence, and I am thankful that the world is finally starting to listen. I also want to assure you that I have never intentionally manipulated or abused anyone in my life. That is not the person I am, how I was raised, or the type of behavior that I condone. I strongly believe in the empowerment of abuse victims, so if I have ever made anyone feel like they are less than equal, I am sincerely sorry. I love playing music more than anything on earth, and I am constantly humbled by the support of our fans. I do not want the allegations surrounding me to negatively affect the reputation or future of the band, or to break the bond and trust that we have created with our fans over the years. So, I have decided to take a break and step away from my position in the band in hopes that this will allow my bandmates and fans to continue focusing on the music and message that Pierce the Veil stands for. Though I am far from perfect, I do have a moral compass and try to stand up for what is right. While away from the band, I will continue to work hard to live my life in that way. The band closes off the statement by saying, Since the allegations first surfaced, our band has discussed how we can ensure the Pierce the Veil community is always a safe environment. We've made many efforts over the years to protect our fans, and we can and will do more. We believe in creating spaces where people can seek help for any issues they are struggling with and provide resources and tools to help. As a band, we are respecting Mike's decision to take a break and step away. Unfortunately, without a core member of the band, we will be respectfully withdrawing from the upcoming UK tour with All Time Low. We promise our fans that we will be back again very soon. While I was editing this video, I realized I completely forgot to talk about this very strange detail. In April of 2020, Mike would appear in a video posted to Pierce the Veil's YouTube channel, where they would perform an acoustic set for their song, Hold On Till May, and Mike was there playing the drums with the band. They spent a few minutes before the performance talking, but never acknowledged the fact that Mike is not in the band anymore for very bad reasons. A few months later, po poopy sh- <laughs> Poopy sh- Fuck. Poopy Shorts on Instagram asked, is Mike going to be in the next album? Vic responded by saying, Hi Poopy- <laughs> Hi Poopy Shorts- <laughs> Actually, hi Poopy Shorts 36. Actually, no, Mike left the band back in 2017, but we're currently working on a new album and hoping to start touring again next year. Stay safe out there. You see, this was a really big area of speculation for me. Like, it just seems they never said that he was out of the band. They just said he was stepping away, which sounds a lot more ambiguous. And then it would seem like he was still in the band because he would perform with them, but apparently he's not. Like, it's just, it, this whole situation is just super weird. I cannot say what did or didn't happen. Number one, I will get fucking sued and I don't want I don't want to lose my money. I just started making money on YouTube. I don't want to lose it. It's also important for me on my channel and in every video I make to be objective with the evidence that is presented to me. And while I am here to give my opinion on everything that I talk about, I want to base my opinion on what is known. It's completely up to you to decide what to believe. But in my personal opinion, it's pretty weird that Mike would leave a band that he started with his brother, which was like his life's work, over false allegations. It's strange too, because assuming that Mike did do it, he could have just lied and said that he didn't. I mean, there's no hardcore concrete evidence that he did it. He could have just been like, no, I didn't do it, and then just put his head down and people would have forgotten about it. I mean, people kind of already did, like they don't talk about it anymore. And I mean, they dropped off of a tour over false allegations. That seems really strange it's also weird that at no point in his response he's just like hey i didn't actually do any of that and he uses this very strange tricky language where he says like oh i care about people who come out and i have respect for victims and all this stuff did you do it or not because it sounds like you did but i feel like there's an angle to this that not many people really look at or talk about um if these allegations are true what the fuck were the rest of the band members doing? If this is true, this would be a pattern of behavior, right? We have multiple different stories here. Uh, it's not like he just did it three times and never did it again. I seriously refuse to believe that three alleged victims are the only ones. How did they not notice a pattern of behavior like that? But it's also possible that they were also engaging in that behavior. I mean the spiky haired one from the Reddit post, that's Jaime, their bassist. This is all speculation. It's just how I see it. 
Um, I'm not making any definitive statements on anybody, not even Mike, um, because I don't want to be sued. I know you've all thought about and talked about the culture around Warp Tour, but you also need to keep in mind that not only are there a lot of creeps doing creepy things, there's a lot of normal people that are letting the creeps be creepy. And what's even more scary is that there are a handful of stories about your favorite artists who went to Warp Tour or maybe even didn't. I mean, we're talking about celebrities and content creators, all these different people that you respect that you think have done nothing wrong, but they have. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as physically possible. You should join my Discord. I just reopened it and uh, we have fun. Also, please subscribe because I made so much money on the last video and I'd like to keep doing that. So let's keep that going, okay? Take care, guys.